Hello, I'm Michael from StuBrisbaneSwell.com and today I'm gonna make a video about uh, rapid alternating uh, occlusion goggles. Uh, they're made of liquid crystal lenses and uh, this is the control box. And these specific pair of goggles uh, were developed by an optometrist named Eric Hussey and he's uh, based somewhere in California, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, and so I uh, contacted him uh, via email and asked him whether I could uh, buy it through the optometric extension program because normally it's only available to professionals. But as he noticed, I'm quite uh, literate into the specifics of uh, vision therapy and vision uh, rehabilitation. He said, yeah, okay, you can buy it then. And uh, I, I'll, I followed up with him and got some recommendations and some suggestions. So, uh, so what's the point of these goggles? Um, so I will show you how they work. You turn them on on the control box and then they just flicker and you can uh, put in settings according to your particular visual situation or which eye uh, you want to stimulate more uh, and I think there's other brands of, of these uh, kinds of glasses so it's not that this is the only one uh, available uh, but I will in the description link to a video that Eric made himself about these glasses and the controls uh, he can explain the controls uh, better than I can in the in this short video uh, but so I will explain why they are used as anti-suppression therapy. Uh, so first, I should explain for some people what is suppression. And uh, suppression is basically the inability to perceive uh, input from one eye for various reasons. It could be because you're uh, cross-eyed and you got get conflicting input from both eyes, so your brain wants to undo the conflict and just focus on one eye and uh, shut down the other eye but it could also be uh, because your eyes are still aligned but uh, you have a lazy eye so you have amblyopia and the input doesn't get through all the way to your visual cortex uh, and then there's other uh, situations where uh, suppression could be intermittent, so sometimes you perceive binocularly, but then in stressful situations or situations you don't uh, know what to do, then you zone in on one eye and you lose a lot of functionality because your binocular vision is not very robust. And so why is, do, I, do I think this is uh, a good way to do anti-suppression uh, therapy? And according to all the research that backed this up, because I've been reading the research, so I'm not just like making this up. Um, most Eric has done some of the research himself, but there's more research in the more general uh, pool. Um, so what do you need for effective anti-suppression uh, therapy? There's two things. First, you need to create a binocular situation, uh, which doesn't allow for the weak eye or the not dominant eye to shut down and that you have some kind of um, feedback as to knowing whether you're looking with one eye or both eyes and famous examples of this uh, after Susan Berry her many TED talks and books and uh, are the the Brock string which gives you an indication of whether you're using both eyes but there's many more uh, possibilities. For example, I've developed uh, a Tetris game that you should use with anaglyph glasses, so you know that you only see the, the blocks on the ground with one eye and the falling blocks with the other eye, and you need to be watching with both eyes to play the game, for example. But anyway, the first condition is, are you using both eyes, and do you have a way of telling whether you're using both eyes? And according to uh, some research, and notably Eric Hussey's uh, research, is the second condition should be, or the second condition that make that might make anti-suppression therapy more effective is motion. 
because vision is all about motion. Uh, you will be more attentive if something happens uh, and if something is moving than whether you are just looking at a standstill and then the eye might be shutting down more easily. And also, again, in vision therapy they, they, they know this. Uh, a good vision therapist might, for example, if you're doing the Brock string and it's not, you're not seeing the, the, you're not seeing the second eye and you're not seeing the, the cross going through the bead, then they might say, yeah, move the string a bit or do something or tap it with your finger uh, to induce some motion and then sometimes all of a sudden the second eye sees it and uh, has the cross through the bead. So two things, binocular situation and visual motion, very important. And to underpin this, uh, so there's kind of two theories of why suppression happens. The, the inhibition therapy is that, as I told you, uh, you might have double vision and the brain has a conflict and it wants to shut down the conflict so it inhibits the second image. So that goes into the idea that it is reaching the visual cortex all the way from your eye to the back of your head but the brain is actively inhibiting. But then the other idea could be your eye is healthy but it so when the motion when there's no motion it just shuts down the pathway all the way to your visual cortex so it's not even getting there. It's not developed enough to like have this information go through the highway of your visual tract and reach all the way back to the end without any motion. So what this this movement therapy would do, so the moving gla uh, shuttering glasses, is just keep stimulating the motion so the second eye keeps uh, active, so your weak eye keeps being active. Uh, like the pathway rather, not the eye. And um, it, it's just you, you build up and you develop this tract until it's stronger and it can be active without this motion uh, being there. So the, the glasses are a way to build up that visual tract. And so the motion pathway is the magnocellular pathway. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a technical term, but basically uh, there's two visual systems that uh, complement each other and one of them is a magnocellular pathway and I momentarily forgot the other one which is not that uh, important for our purpose. So it's basically a new way to um, to look at suppression and uh, to attack it from a different angle or, because likely both theories are true but you might as well uh, so attack them on both fronts with the inhibition, go against the inhibition, but then also develop the good way of doing things. So not just make it less bad, but make it better uh, while doing it. And so the, the best way to, to use this is to have this on and then do a, a particular vision therapy uh, exercise while it's on your nose. Uh, so you're not only keeping those pathways active, but you're also training them to, excuse me, to, uh, for example, see depth in a stereogram or a particular vectogram. And yeah, so what, what's not in, oh yeah, and um, Eric Hussey not only theorized about this, but he also did a research, a research study on young adults who are undergoing extra education to elevate their their uh, reading levels so basically uh, people are in uh, maybe young adults 20 years old and they're having trouble finding a job or improving themselves because they have a like systemic reading problem uh, due to uh, intermittent central suppression so they don't really have amblyopia or strabismus but they so, as I said before, in stressful times, as they're not reading very well, so reading is very stressful for them, and then the visual process in their brain uh, kind of shuts down and they, they start developing suppression momentarily. So, 
it could be very subtle, but even subtle problems with with suppression are very uh, have great effects on people's uh, quality of life or uh, functionality or job prospects or whatever or uh, education. But then, as I was thinking and using this device, I was also thinking about other ways that it could be uh, working on your visual system and your brain. So. Now we've only been talking about uh, retinal information, how it helps to get the information through the retina, through the visual tract. But another interesting thing is that, so in the visual process you got retinal information, extra retinal information, which could be the, the information come from your muscles, so the steadiness and the proprioception. And in this respect, so you're, they're, they're always interacting these two, like retinal and extra retinal. And so, when it goes dark, there's no retinal information to complement their extra retinal, and so you don't, you cannot draw on this retinal information to keep your eyes steady, which you usually, like you, usually do. Or if you have a weak uh, binocular system, it's a very uh, important aspect of keeping your eyes steady, at least in my uh, experience. So when it goes dark, my eye starts drifting away, and then all of a sudden it opens up again and the eye wants to go back thanks to the information that's coming and that like the all all the way it's like this dance between these two situations so it could actually help also uh, increase uh, steadiness of the eye and that's my feeling or that's why uh, that's one of the most challenging things for me to use it uh, it's so disorienting in a way and uh, there's, it's also exhausting because then you're all, all the time adjusting, but that's also part of the training, so that's kind of good. And in my uh, personal situation, my uh, biggest problem is that indeed when reading, I start suppressing again because it's very uh, stressful for me and, and yeah, then you have the reflex of going back to the one eye that is most effective. Uh, but in, I would say in my case it's more a motor problem. Uh, I, I tend to go back to my dominant eye because I'm not good at converging my eyes toward the text and I cannot focus uh, just physically. And then my brain starts realizing the situation that like yeah I can't converge his eyes let's try to shut down the eye but then it's not very good at that, so it's this whole stressful and painful situation. So why might I think that even though it doesn't really work specifically on um, on this motor and eye uh, movement problem, if it helps with sensory fusion down the back of my head and the brain gets better at combining both eyes and having these two pathways active constantly, then it might lock on back there and give more specific control information or commands to my eye muscles and uh, they might like start interacting and start uh, reinforcing themselves and uh, as a whole you will build a stronger and more robust visual system and the binocularity will be ingrained like ultimately which is my goal um, and I'm hoping uh, with time and more simulation that I will still get there uh, despite being 26 and despite having had three eye surgeries which is the main obstacle uh, to having like smooth eye movements and uh, reaching certain ranges uh, with my left eye. So I think as my uh, muscles get more agile and leaner that these two aspects of the sensory fusion and the motor fusion so the movements uh, might reinforce themselves and as I get older I might actually get better <laughs> so by the, the time I'm 30 I might be getting somewhere uh, close to a proficient reading level which might help me achieve more of my life goal life goals and that might be uh, great so i'm hoping for that and i'm doing everything i can uh, to get there 
And I will uh, post some more information about these goggles in the description of the video because I, I haven't said everything and I will uh, post the links to the research. Uh, so I hope this was kind of useful and uh, I hope I haven't been babbling on for too long. So uh, I will be posting more videos about other exercise and topics. Uh, see you next time. Bye.